Over the years, I've talked plenty about your computer storage, backing up your files, backing up Windows, and today I thought I would talk about a backup solution that will help you know, simplify and automate a lot of that process for you. Now, luckily, Minitool reached out about their ShadowMaker program. So today we're gonna walk through Minitool ShadowMaker. I'm gonna walk through the free version first. We're gonna take a look at all the features that it has. And we're also gonna talk about the limitations in the free version. And then I'm gonna go ahead and activate my license key that they provided me. And we will go through what it can do in the fully unlocked version as well. We're gonna go through a sample of a backup that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna talk about when backups can be useful, what they're useful for. And then we'll just kind of talk about whether or not the program is worth it for you in the end. So without further ado, let's hop into the computer. All right, so here we are on the Minitool ShadowMaker website. There will be a link down in the description below for this. And let's quickly just talk about what they have on the website, what they're showing the program can do. And it's a backup cloning and restoring software. And it allows you to do quite a few things here. You can reliably back up your solutions or your, your disks. You can quick quickly do system restores in case you run into things like blue screens or whatever after running into an upgrade or uh, making a change, for example. This won't do anything at the BIOS level, only at the OS level. And you can automatically sync files between computers, which I think is pretty handy. There's a lot of solutions out there for file syncing, but if you already have the software, this is a pretty nice addition. And you can clone disks uh, within ShadowMaker, both system and non-system disks. The only problem is the system disk cloning is limited to the paid version, and we'll go over that a little bit later. You can also set up automated backup schedules, and they have smart backup management where it will automatically delete outdated stuff and retain your latest backups so that you don't have to use up too much storage. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the software. So if I go ahead and launch it here, this is the free version. I do not have my uh, premium key uh, activated at all. So as you can see here, we are on the free version. We're getting ads because we're on the free version. Um, you can easily just close these out. And this is what the software looks like. It's a pretty nice interface. As you can see, we can see all of the drives that we have available to us as backup sources. Um, so that's pretty nice. It also identifies the Google Drive, which is kind of cool. It will show you how much your computer is using in terms of your disks. Not a big deal. It will also show you your last backup. And this was a little test backup I did. It'll show when your next backup, if you have the scheduled backup set, and it'll show you how many restore images you have available if you want to keep track of those. Next up, we have the backup tab. This is gonna be the whole process of backing up either an entire disk or a particular folder. Um, so that's pretty nice, pretty handy. We'll go over this process in depth after we go through the rest of these tabs. We have the synchronization. So this allows you to sync folders or files between different devices or just between different folders as well. Um, so you have this available to you. There are a few options relating to the things that you're going to compare when syncing the files between devices. So keep that in mind. You can also filter particular file types as well and exclude them. So, you know, you don't want your page file being copied between devices, for example. Now we have the restore, which will allow you to restore from a previous backup. Um, this one's really quick. And again, we're gonna go over this when we go through the backup process. I'm gonna back up and then restore a particular folder. In the management, you can also manage previous backups. So we're actually gonna go ahead and just delete this backup um, because we're gonna create a new one. So we don't need it anymore. In the logs, it'll tell you all of the things that you've done and you can kind of choose the period. So if you have the scheduled stuff, it will tell you if things are successful or not successful. Um, if not successful, it'll give you an error message and it'll try to uh, promote a solution for how to fix that error. And then in the tools, we have a few other things. We have the media builder. We can do add boot menu. We can dismount a particular drive. So that's nice as well. If you want to dismount a drive after doing a backup, you can clone disks here. You can do the PXE, you can remote in and you can use a system booster as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do a backup. 
We're gonna do this in the free version so you can see what I'm able to do here. Um, so we're gonna go to backup. I'm gonna go to source. We're gonna go to folders and files. I'm gonna go to my user. I'm gonna go down to videos and we're gonna back up this OBS that has a recording from OBS in there. So I'm gonna press okay. And now for my destination folder, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use my Acasis um, external drive. So you never wanna back up or it's not suggested that you back up to the same drive that you are backing up from because the whole purpose of a backup is if something happens with that disc, you have that data somewhere else that you can restore it from. So having an external drive is really good for this. Having a network drive is really good for this. Um, so I'm using an external drive that I have plugged into the computer and we're gonna go ahead and press okay there. And we're, it's gonna be pretty simple. It's only 1.2 gigs, so it's gonna be relatively quick. And we have some options here. I can schedule this backup if I want to. So if I turn it on, I can make it so that it does it daily, weekly, monthly, um, at a particular time, starting at a particular time, you know, all that kind of stuff. You can do quite a bit here. You can even do start on events. That is only available in the pro version, but you can do start up on event, which is pretty handy. We'll go back into this uh, with the pro version. I just wanna show everybody that it works with the free version in the standard way. We're not gonna schedule anything. So we can also change the backup scheme. You can change full incremental differential. That's a little bit more complicated and most people aren't really gonna worry about that, but you're more than welcome to look into this. And they also have documentation on this, which I will leave a link in the description below. So we're just gonna go back to the backup options. We're gonna do no compression because I'm not worried about that. We can even password protect it if we want to, um, but we're just gonna leave everything as default and we're gonna go ahead and press okay. And we're gonna back up now. So as you can see here, there's an option where we can shut down the computer after the backup's done if we want. So that's pretty nice. And the backup is already completed. That was super quick. If we go ahead and navigate to the external drive, we can see that we have a backup folder here and it has the backup files inside. So that's pretty cool. And it was very simple. It was pretty quick for one and a half gigs, give or take a little bit. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna navigate to that folder I'm gonna go ahead and delete the whole folder. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna restore from our backup and we're gonna see if the file is here and if we're able to watch the video that was recorded. So we're gonna go ahead and go to restore. I'm gonna click restore here and I click next. We're gonna, it's just gonna show everything that we have it. So that's all good. We're gonna press next. We're going to go ahead and put our destination path I want it to be the same location. So we're gonna do the same location. We're gonna go ahead and press start. Operation is completed successfully. Now we have our folder back again. If I go ahead and open this and then I open the video file. We can see that we got everything here and the video is working fine. It works great and we're all good to go. So that was a really, really simple process. Now that we've done our backup though, we do have a few options here. So we can go ahead and delete, verify, browse, restore, mount it as an entirely new drive. We can schedule it, edit the scheme and locate the image. Um, if you go ahead and verify, it's just to go ahead and check that the backup was done properly. So if you verify it, you go ahead and press next. It'll be really quick since it was a very small backup and it completed successfully. So we're good there. All right, so let's talk about the difference between the free and the pro versions. I think the free version will do most of what people want or what people need, um, but the pro versions are great as well. So as you can see here, the free has a lot of the same features, but what it's missing from the pro version is you cannot clone a system disk, as I mentioned earlier. This is a very common thing. It seems a lot of these companies lock the system migrations and system cloning to the premium versions. So I do have a video on that. If you do wanna go ahead and check it out, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but cloning the system disk is not available in the free version. You also cannot do the full and differential backup schemes on the free version. It does not have universal support um, for restorations. You can't backup in Windows PE, which is a minimal uh, Windows environment. You can restore in PE, however, you cannot sync in PE, clone in PE, manage backups in PE, or manage sync in PE. But again, 
a lot of users are not going to be using Windows PE at all. So a lot of those features don't really matter. A lot of people aren't going to be changing their backup schemes, so that doesn't really matter either. Um, so to be honest, I think the free version does a lot for you. If there are any of these features like cloning system disks, like changing your backup schemes, like doing the universal support for restoration, then, you know, paying for the premium version is worth it there. But for a lot of people, I think the free version is going to be able to do a lot what you want. And if you do want to do backups on a regular basis, this is a really quick and easy way to do so. And the software was super easy to use. And that's it. I mean, I think Shadowmaker does a really good job, even as just the free version. I think the free version captures what most people are going to want to use it for. Um, if you do need the premium features available to you, the pricing for the premium tiers is relatively inexpensive. So if that's what you want, um, you can go ahead and use that. Again, there will be links in the description where you can go ahead and check out the software for yourself. The free version is great. It does what you want it to. It's very, very easy and simple to use. Being able to schedule things is really, really nice. And you know, the only things that you're really losing out on on the premium version are some very minor tweaks and things that I don't think a lot of average users are gonna be end up using anyways. So with all that said, really do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below and I'll try to get them all as quick as I can. Big thanks to my patron sponsors and thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you wanna see any of the other videos where I talk about software and things that you can use on your computer, you can check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.